guys, I am so beyond excited for this video. I've been hinting at it for months. Welcome to the Tom Ford entire brand overview. Woohoo! We are going to walk through every product in the Tom Ford makeup line. This is going to be a big video. Consider it like a Tom Ford encyclopedia of sorts. And I will put timestamps in the description box to make your life a bit easier. My hope is that by the end of this video, you have a really good understanding of the range. Uh, and when you go to the counter, it isn't totally overwhelming. And hopefully you can also make better purchasing decisions. Stick around till the end for my top five Tom Ford products and enough jibber jabber. Let's do this. Let's work in chronological order. So starting with the illuminating primer. This is not designed to prolong makeup wear, so to speak, but it adds a beautiful luminosity. It's like a very refined and sophisticated glow that you can apply all over. But I tend to focus it more on the high points. Uh, it's not greasy, it's not glittery, and I will happily finish this bottle, but I'm not entirely sure that I would repurchase this one. I kind of prefer the, the Charlotte Tilbury Flawless Filter for this purpose. There are four foundations in the line. So in order of coverage, we have the Traceless, which is very sheer and glossy. The Traceless Perfecting, this is like the medium coverage sister. The Stick Foundation, which has medium plus coverage. And then the Waterproof Foundation Concealer, which is epic full coverage. My favorite is probably the Traceless. I featured this one in my top foundations video, which I'll link on the screen. It's uber sheer and uber glossy in finish. This is your glossier, no makeup makeup kind of aesthetic. Uh, the formula is also super slippy, so it doesn't really set on the skin, right? And therefore the coverage doesn't really build upon itself. This is one that's meant to be worn sheer. And as long as those are characteristics that you like in a foundation, then Traceless is like editorial glossy skin goals. Traceless Perfecting in my mind is kind of like the middle child, right? It's got a nice medium coverage, like a nice satin finish. So it's not super matte, it's not super dewy. It's, it sits in this really nice middle ground. Um, I've used a macro lens for all of this footage and you can barely see any product on my face. It meshes so beautifully with the skin. It's also formulated with uh, film former, so it's very long wearing. Uh, my only real critique is that it just doesn't do much for pores or fine lines or texture. It's not a smoothing formula at all. Next is the stick foundation. I'll be using this to add a little bit of coverage around the nose and cheeks here. When I first purchased this years and years ago, I was not a fan at all. But in preparation for this video, I did a lot of testing and a lot of experimenting and it did start to grow on me. Um, I will say it's still not my favorite stick foundation because it does have that kind of thick waxy consistency that I tend to associate with those like old school stick foundations. I personally prefer a super soft and melty uh, stick formula, kind of like more like the hourglass stick. The waterproof foundation and concealer is a genuine full coverage product. They are not playing around here. I personally prefer this formula more as a concealer, so I can add a little bit more coverage on my rosy cheeks or on any blemishes. The finish is definitely matte, super matte. Uh, but it blends out beautifully and it really builds upon itself with ease. It's so rare that I find a matte full coverage foundation that flatters my dry skin. But this is one of them and I am very pleasantly surprised. We have two clicky style concealers in the range. The concealing pen, which you can see has like a little sponge tip applicator and the illuminating highlight pen, which has a little synthetic brush applicator. So let's start with the illuminating highlight pen. Be mindful when you are purchasing this product. Half the shades are like peachy correctors and the other half are really shimmery highlights. I have the shade six, which is one of your pale salmon colors. And true to the name, this product is more about illuminating than it is about coverage. This is kind of like your YSL Touche Clat formula. So it'll deflect shadows and it's really kind to fine lines and it looks really natural on the skin. I have nothing bad to say, but I'm not necessarily blown away. Um, by this formula. I think many brands make similar kind of pens. The Tom Ford concealing pen, on the other hand, caught me off guard. S so very opaque, <laughs> the coverage, and it's super matte. This is what I would describe as a full glam concealer. Uh, sort of in a similar vein to your Tarte Shape Tape, right? Um, this concealer also has quite strong setting power. So you ought to blend it pretty quickly because once it's set, it's not going anywhere, very long wearing. I should mention that I do detect a very, very small amount of micro shimmer when I stand in direct sunlight. 
uh, but I'm neurotic about makeup. It's really not that noticeable. <laughs> Moving on, we have the Illuminating Powder. So this is a matte powder that comes in two tones, one that leans a little bit pink and one that leans a little bit yellow. So obviously I have the more yellow tone and I think this product is actually genius. That yellow cast really brightens any under eye hollows or shadows that you might have on your face. I also like to use it lightly down the T-zone to mute any shine and as you can see, it performs beautifully for that too. I do suspect that this product is going to look a bit ashy on deeper skin tones in which case uh, Tom Ford also does something called a translucent finishing powder and that has a little more option shade wise let's talk about shade and illuminate so if you've not heard of this product before, it's a cream, highlight, and contour duo. And this is definitely a cult classic Tom Ford product. I remember being in high school and reading about it in magazines and a lot of high profile makeup artists use it. I have the shade Intensity 1. Uh, there is also an Intensity 2 for deeper complexions. The contours in both Intensity 1 and Intensity 2 lean rather warm. So this is not your grayish contour and it I would more so use this as a bronzing product. The texture is really interesting. Both the highlight and the contour are very balmy and slippy in texture. So they don't really set on the skin. It sort of remains a little bit tacky and I do notice that my hair kind of wants to stick to my face, kind of like gloss. The highlight is completely transparent and it acts more like a face gloss again. So it gives that wet shine without any shimmer, which is beautiful. This is such an interesting product to me. It always kind of struck me as a bit like model makeup, like makeup for a photo shoot. Um, but if you do love your super sheer, balmy, slippy cream products, then this may very well be up your alley. The Tom Ford line has two bronzers. The Ultimate Bronzer, which is a newer formula, and then the Bronzing Powder, which has been around forever and ever. The Ultimate Bronzer is one of those new age jelly formulas. Tom Ford describes it as a liquid powder hybrid. So when you put the, your finger in the pan, it feels quite hard, almost like a hard gel. Um, and the brush, your brush won't pick up much product. Um, so you get more of a sheer application at first, but it's absolutely buildable. I actually prefer sheer face products because that way you can build and blend slowly and it always looks seamless and it's less inclined to go patchy. Um, yeah, this is a really unique formula. I very much enjoy it. The bronzing powders, on the other hand, are a more traditional powder formula. I know a lot of people love these bronzers. They have quite a cult following. The shade Terra in particular gets a lot of rave reviews because it's a bit cooler in tone and that's actually quite a difficult thing to find in bronzers. Personally, I'm not blown away by them uh, and I would purchase the ultimate bronzer over this one. Highlight. So I believe, I believe, don't quote me on this, but I believe that the only permanent powder highlight in the line currently is the Skin Illuminating Duo. Sometimes I use these shades separately, but mostly I just mix them together and whack it on. I've learned that you get the best results if you really buff the product into the skin with a brush. So the more you buff, the more you glow. Exhibit A right here. So just don't go in expecting a blinding highlight straight away. I would describe this as more of a subtle but buildable shine. On to blushes. So I'm going to make a generalization here, but for the most part, the Tom Ford cream blushes tend to be quite balmy and emollient. So a very similar formula to the shade and illuminate that I was speaking about earlier. Those glossy textures I find can shift foundation underneath. So I'm a little bit more careful with application. So I use more of a, a patting and a dabbing motion as opposed to a swiping motion. Let's say cream blushes aren't your thing. Maybe you prefer uh, a powder formula, in which case uh, Tom Ford does two powder blush formulas. The sheer duos are another instance of that hybrid formula, jelly. So you get more of a sheer flush of color at first and then you can build them up slowly. We have a double dose of luminosity in these duos. And I love me a glowy blush, but if I'm having a bit of a, a dermatitis moment, that reflect will draw attention to all of my skin texture. Same goes for large pores and congestion. Uh, shimmery blushes are just not the most forgiving. The cheek colors, on the other hand, are not a jelly. They're just a traditional powder formula. Um, and the payoff is rather strong, so I'm really careful to dab off any excess product on the back of my hand uh, before application. Otherwise, it can go a little bit patchy. Some of the shades are matte, 
Uh, some of them are shimmery. They've got a really nice selection of shades. These blushes are just a bit meh to me. Although, I must say, Inhibition is the perfect nude blush on my skin tone, and I would repurchase that shade. Let's talk cream eyeshadows. So we have two formulas here on the screen, the cream color for eyes on the right and the cream and powder eye color on the left. Stay with me here, people. The cream eyeshadow formulas are the same. The only difference between these two products is that the cream eyeshadows on the left come with this sparkly powder top coat. I've been raving about this cream eyeshadow formula for years. Back in the day, it was limited edition. I was petitioning for them to make it permanent and maybe they heard my cries because it is now a permanent uh, part of the line. It is such a close mimic to that glossy eye trend without having to actually use gloss on the eyes. Now, some of the reviews I've read describe these cream shadows as long wearing and I shall politely disagree. This is not a bulletproof eyeshadow. It will move around a bit throughout the day, but that glossy lid look is everything to me. I do notice that some of the shades are more opaque and perform better than others. So in case you can't swatch in store, my personal favorites are the Platinum Cream Eyeshadow and the Naked Bronze Duo. Oh my God. The sparkly top coat on the Naked Bronze Duo is truly magical. It can take that cream eyeshadow into like a real evening look, mesmerizing, multifaceted, sparkly goodness. Tom Ford has a wide selection of eyeshadow quads. Obviously I don't own every single one, but here are a few on the screen and you can see absolute opulence. Got such rich colors and jewel tones that are fresh and exciting. But what I love about these eyeshadow quads is they all manage to be very wearable. So it's no surprise that my favorite eyeshadow quad is the very neutral and very practical Coco Mirage. This is matte, buttery, grungy goodness. Coco Mirage, it epitomizes what I expect of a high-end eyeshadow quad. As I'm applying it, it just blends itself and it's an absolute pleasure to use. So yes, I enjoy many of the eyeshadow quads, but obviously I have critiques as per usual. If you watched my Charlotte Tilbury brand overview, these sentiments are gonna sound familiar. And that's actually not a coincidence because Charlotte played a role in creating many of the Tom Ford products. So there are some uncanny similarities uh, between the brands. Critiques, right. Let's go back uh, and look at all those palettes lined up. What do you see? I see gorgeous palettes that lean very shimmery. If you often wear shimmers over the entirety of your eye, then this is going to be a non-issue for you. But often when I'm using these quads, I find myself reaching around my collection for a dark matte or something to ground all that shimmer. It's not a deal breaker. I'm just acknowledging here that for some of us, these might not be standalone palettes. Let's move on to eyeliner, shall we? We have retractable pencils and smudgy pencils in jewel tones and liquid eyeliners. There's just so much room for activities. If I could pick one liquid liner to use for the rest of my life, I would pick the Tom Ford Eye Defining Pen. So that nib on the end is a brush tip, not a felt tip. So the nib never dries out, it never frays, the ink is super black. I mean, it's damn near perfect. The only thing that could make it more perfect is if it were matte in finish, but you know, you can't have everything in life. Next we have the Eye Coal Intense, which is a pencil liner that comes in so many pretty jewel tones. These are more traditional coals in the sense that the pencil is soft and smudgy, which is gonna be ideal for maybe creating graphic shapes and really messy smoky eyes because you can smudge and manipulate that product very easily, but, on the flip side, if you're looking for an eyeliner that is going to last through your CrossFit, this is not the product. It will smudge everywhere. The high definition eyeliner, on the other hand, is very long wearing. So if you wanna put something in your tight line or your waterline, this is your guy. He doesn't smudge. Have fun removing it though. <laughs> you will definitely need an oil-based remover and lots of patience. So Tom Ford offers a few different mascaras. The Extreme Mascara and the Shutter Lash Mascara have that kind of fluffy, natural fiber wand that you can see here. Whereas the Spike Lash Wand is plastic and spiky, <laughs> as the name might suggest. It kind of looks a little bit like a screw to me. But let's see what they actually do for the lashes. So here are some photos that I prepared earlier so that we can compare them side by side. 
The Extreme Mascara and the Shutter Lash Mascara look rather similar on my lashes. They both give that feathery, pretty look. I'm seeing good volume, good length, uh, great separation. Neither of them smudged. You know, what's not to love? The Spike Lash, on the other hand, whew, this was just the strangest experience. It gave me three large lashes, just three. And when I blinked, my lashes kind of stuck together. Reviewing mascaras I think is very challenging because they seem to perform so differently from one person to the next. But personally, if I was spending a buttload of cash on a high-end mascara, I would be going the Sisley So Intense. That's just my benchmark for luxury mascaras. Let's talk brows. We have the Brow Sculptor Pencil and the Brow Fiber Gel. Uh, both of them I have in the shade uh, taupe or taupe, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. Um, it's actually a really great neutral brown shade. The Brow Sculptor is one of those larger, more triangular nibbed pencils. And I think this is ideal for naturally full brows or if you're just quickly filling in a ball spot. But if you have naturally sparse brows and essentially you're creating a brow from scratch, these nibs I find to be too large to have any proper precision. I have similar triangular nib brow pencils from brands like Hourglass, uh, Charlotte Tilbury, Anastasia does one. And to be honest, I don't know if I could tell them apart in a blind test. They're all nice to me. <laughs> Make of that what you will. The Brow Fiber Gel is actually quite lovely. It's got a good amount of hold, a good amount of color that you can build up if you choose, and it never makes the brows look or feel crusty. This gel is actually a little bit lighter and warmer than my typical brow taste, because I like that real grayish brow. But sometimes when a look calls for a bit of a softer, warmer brow, I find myself reaching for this one. The Tom Ford lip category is huge. <laughs> it is so overwhelmingly large. So to cover as much info as possible, I'm gonna put some infographics on the screen so that you can better understand all the formulas and then we'll do lip swatches so that you can better understand the colors. So when I think of Tom Ford lipstick, I often think of a pigmented lipstick with a creamy finish. But as I researched for this video, I discovered that they also have so many matte lipsticks and then matte liquid lipsticks. Uh, we have sheer and glossy formulas and then formulas that give you that stained lip effect. And then the mini lipsticks, oh, absolute genius. I'm a sucker for anything mini. The only thing they don't do a ton of is lip liners. And that's a real pity because I'm an absolute lip liner addict, but I digress. Let us address the elephant in the room. Any one of these lipsticks is going to cost a small fortune and you might find yourself thinking, are these lipsticks going to change my life? Are they going to pay my bills? Are they going to do my laundry? And so I tested this theory and my laundry is exactly where I left it. What you are getting here is beautiful, luxe packaging, lovely formulas, and ultimately the thing that makes Tom Ford lip special in my eyes are the shades. Tom Ford excels at color and some of these shades have become my absolute go-tos. You want a special occasion red? They've got it. You want a fiery orange? They have three. You want a nude for every skin tone? Done. My Tom Ford lipstick collection, let me tell you, it holds a very special place in my heart. So it's hard for me to pick favorites, but if you insist, I suppose I could narrow it down to maybe my top three. So in no order, I could not live without. Spanish Pink. This is a warm nude with a luminous finish and actually the first Tom Ford lipstick that I ever fell in love with. First time, uh, this is a peachy pink in more of a satin matte finish and I just love how this sits on my complexion. It just brightens up my skin. A more recent discovery is Solar Affair. This color embodies summer to me and it just brightens my mood and the, the formula is super comfy as well. I know someone's going to ask, so let's quickly touch on the Tom Ford makeup brushes. Undeniably beautiful brushes, right? The quality and the craftsmanship is superb. They do tend to be rather dense brushes across the board, uh, which may or may not be your preference. I've always preferred a more loosely packed brush. So although I can objectively say that they're good brushes, I rarely find myself reaching for mine. I, I do like the eye blender brush, to be fair. You'll see that pop up in my tutorials every now and again. 
I adore all things Tom Ford and that's why I created this video. But hypothetically, if my collection were to vanish, these are my top five Tom Ford products that I would repurchase ASAP. The Traceless Foundation. So this is not one that I use every day, but whenever I wanna create a really editorial glossy vibe, this is my jam. Cream and powder eye color in naked bronze. I would happily wear this on my eyes every day for the rest of my life. It's sparkly, but in a really cool, I don't try too hard kind of way. The Eye Defining Pen. This is my holy grail liquid liner. The only thing that has ever even come close is the Maybelline Hyper Sharp Wing, um, but given the option, I still prefer the Tom Ford. The Coco Mirage Eyeshadow Quad. So matte eyeshadows are the foundation of all of my eye looks and these are damn good mattes. They feel like butter. Finally, for number five, I would pick one of those lipstick shades that just continues to blow my mind. So on my complexion, that might be like Spanish Pink or First Time or Soul Affair, maybe. I love them all. Don't make me choose. I hope you love this video as much as I enjoyed making it. If you would like to win some Tom Ford makeup, I am doing a giveaway on my Instagram right now, at Karima McKimmy, so go follow me there. I also wanna take a minute to celebrate Anna, who is the genius behind all of the illustrations in this video. Please go and follow her on Instagram, at HelloAnnaO, and drool over her incredible art. Like, what? Look at these amazing illustrations, Anna. You absolutely blow my mind and I'm so proud to have created this video with you. Now I have a question for you guys watching. What brand overview would you like to see next on my channel? I'm thinking maybe Hourglass or maybe Nars. I don't know, you tell me. I hope you're having a wonderful day, whatever it is you're up to, and I shall speak to you all very soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.